What up, what up? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast, where you can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you stream your podcast, chopping it up about music, money, the content creator, economy. This is for the people who think different. Now, today we got a very special episode. We're going to talk about Beyonce and how she messed up her brand. She made a huge brand faux pas and her own fans step back on her. Also, Russ, the artist Russ, has actually broken down a major problem that many other artists are having in terms of their brand. And he analyzed people's YouTube page, no, their Instagram page, mm-hmm. to, uh, to, um, to explain how these artists are messing up in the game. So as you can see, this episode is going to be very heavy on the branding talk. Get ready. But before we get into that, this topic right here is blowing people's mind because the AI (laughs) allowing people to make music sounding like whoever Whoever. is blowing people's minds, but it's also scaring some folks as well. Let's have that quick talk. Jay-Z's engineer breaks down why AI is going to take a terrible turn for artists and mess up a lot of people's careers. But first, let's start with this little clip right here. This is my voice without the Kendrick Lamar AI voice filter. And this is my voice with the Kendrick Lamar voice filter. Let it run DC, let it run. (laughs) Wish I could go back to the beginning. Are they gonna go and fake a Kendrick? No. They could never capture all my lessons. My just is simply heaven in case you let get the message. Let's pray. Now, <laughs> that clip for those who just listened on the podcast was a guy who looks nothing like Kendrick Lamar. Nothing. Chubby white guy with beard, glasses, saying, hey, this is what my voice sounds like without the Kendrick Lamar filter. This is what it sounds like, like with the Kendrick Lamar filter. And Young Guru has broken down a lot of reasons why this is scary. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing, skipping right to it, is the fact that there is no copyright for voice today. Yeah. Right? So, it's fun. It's all fun and games until something takes a turn. Right now, people are being open that, oh, this is an AI sample. This Mm -hmm. is an AI flip or whatever, a cover, Mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. But what happens when you have a song that's blowing up and they really think it's an artist and it's not that artist? I don't know yet. Well, I guess I, because it's, one is going to happen. Like we were just talking about that, right? Like yeah. oh, it's, it's, it's going to happen at yeah. some point. Um, because the people who aren't really paying attention yep. to AI, like they're just going to, it's going to hit that pocket. They're going to think it's real and, and we're going to have to deal with the ramifications of that. And I'm also just thinking about, yeah, you, know, you know, we we were also just talking about, I was saying, you know, conspiracy theory, Corey is like, okay, if they're trying to get us to accept AI mm-hmm. and, and get us to be okay with it, they're, they're doing a good job because they're leading with entertainment. Right, That's funny. The way. You always yeah. gotta do it. It's funny memes. <laughs> funny <laughs> memes, cool songs. Oh, listen to, listen to Uzi cover a future song. It's all like fun, and entertaining stuff. Mm-hmm. But what about when the first malicious fan is like, "Oh, I'm gonna put out, I don't know, Uzi dissing the president or some shit like that." You know what I'm saying? Because it's gonna get there, bro. Either it's gonna get there because, like I said, somebody in the back end is gonna uh, accelerate it, or a fan is going to do it. You know, we know we know how fans can kind of go with this stuff. Well, I, I like that you said that because you said Uzi this and the president. We're not even just talking about just music, music yeah. right? It could literally just be a clip, and then you throw a deep fake face on top of it, and then somebody's really saying and doing something that looks and looks and feels to be them. Yeah. But like reeling it back and going back to music. Now we already had this. I feel like we had this conversation first, but now we've seen other people talk about it, talk about it because we didn't get to drop that clip but oh that's from that that one episode yeah yeah, yeah that, that episode where the audio messed up <laughs> well it literally just was gone but so if you are an artist and you create a reference track mm-hmm. right before we've always had artists in re- reference tracks we all always had songwriters send demos mm-hmm. well now that i can send a demo in your voice Gonna change the game. That's gonna change the game. One, that's a better selling point because I could make you like it more if I send you a demo in your voice, yeah. right? Yeah. But even greater, if I'm the artist on the other side, at some point I say, "Well, shit, I might not even need to re-record this because they hit it in a way that's so perfect." <laughs> and now being an artist looks like, "Oh, let me just get a bunch of 
you know, songwriters. Let them send in their references. Yeah. And producers, all that. And then all I do is approve. It's like signing off. Mm -hmm. Yep, this can be officially a Kanye West song. Because Kanye West, especially somebody like him, right? He already works with a bunch of people anyway. Mm -hmm. It's an orchestra of individuals. So there's a lot of people. As a matter of fact, some of these artists that we we say need a ghostwriter at the beginning, they, they've accused a lot of women artists in the past about this type of thing. So you can literally build an artist. Yeah. Like we, we talk about social media being the era where, oh, there's just this personality. And then all of a sudden you get a song. I mean, give them a song because they're not, now that they're popping. The music's going to be popping because they already got an audience. Well, what if I can truly build an artist? I can have Ja'Cory just rap, write everything and then make it Ice Spice. Yeah. So the artist never has to <laughs> do anything. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know, man. We're, we're about to enter a, a really, I don't know, that's kind of a dope era too, though. Yeah, that I, delegating the creativity, you know, in a way, that's kind of hard. I, I know it sucks from this anti artist, but damn, that's kind of hard. That's what I'm saying, bro. We were just saying that, man. Like, I, as a fan, am very excited to see where this goes. Yeah. As a music industry professional, I'm just glad I'm not a songwriter or artist. You know what I'm saying? Thank, <laughs> thankfully, I'm on the other end of it. Well, we can we can look at it that way, but I don't know. I'd be empowered if I was a songwriter. Well, okay, yeah, actually, you're right. Songwriter, producer, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Because yeah. like, yeah, I think that's what's gonna change the most off of this, bro. The reference game, or just like you said, being able to amplify the selling point of the song, just off mm -hmm. of being able to input your personality and your your little cadences and things like that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's going to be game changing for that end. I mean, but the regular artist that wants to, you know, put their voice out, I guess. But think about production deals, again, which is in many ways is building an artist. Yeah. Because it's developing, but it's yeah. expediting that. So now, shoot, I got my producer and I'm a songwriter. I'm a songwriter. I'm, I can write in different voices. You know what I'm saying? I was going to say, and that's what could be crazy, bro. The building the artist thing could get really granular because sometimes, like, have you ever seen the artist where you're just like, maybe it's your voice, right? Like, not mm -hmm. saying it's bad or whatever, but for whatever reason, some artists have voices that people just take to yeah, a lot a lot more of others, right? So, like, now I can just go, I can, I can go find someone whose voice I like and be like, yo, their voice yes. would be crazy, but they just suck at cadence or they suck at you know what I'm saying like staying on beat or something and then pair that with the ai shit from it's crazy brad we're on the same page <laughs> i was about to say as an example of this do you remember when young jeezy talked about kanye taking his voice yeah right yeah, just a yeah. year yeah like yeah because jeezy has such a distinct and dope voice yeah. that was an example of him using that right just using jeezy as ad libs because he has such a dope voice so that's the exact same concept yeah. i'm gonna go find dope voices it's no difference than me being a producer and i'm walking around and i hear some construction and I record it on my recorder. Oh, yeah. And then I take it back to the studio and flip it. You know what I'm saying? You, you imagine that conversation. You're like, hey, hold up real quick, bro. I like your voice. Can I get like a quick, just like a quick 30 <laughs> seconds, man? That shit kind of fire. Like the gravel in the voice, bro, is perfect for this one song I got. Hey, I got for real. <laughs> nice little rasp. You know what I'm saying? That's, you literally now can use the entire world as, as, I don't even want to say the canvas, but just, you, 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 you Oh, raw material. It's all raw materials. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I see this, I see this. I can mix and match every single thing. When before you had to get the person to agree to it, you gotta yeah, give them show an agreement, up. show up. <laughs> so just imagine you seeing your voice on something. And you're like, man, that's my voice. How do you even argue that sometimes? Cause they might yeah. say, I like your voice. Yeah. And then they just get catch that from this video. It's not even like they met you in person. So yeah. now you're like, well, I never met this person in person. How can I prove this is my voice? You're right. That's a good point. That's <laughs> You're like, man, I'm like, I think that's me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. I, I feel like if it was me, just you know, taking to me personally, I feel like I would know. Me. Yeah. Of course you would know. How do you prove it somebody else? Though? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're that's right. That's the problem. Hopefully, hopefully, I was going to say, hopefully my people would know me well enough to know, but that's not true, bro, because I've been hearing some deep fake Uzi songs. I've been all over them shit. It's like, damn, man, when, Baby, when Uzi put this out? Oh. No. <laughs> Government wise, Money wise, that's the part you're gonna want. Yeah. You're not gonna care if 
if I, I'm like, yeah, that's your Corey voice. It don't matter if Sean agrees. You're going to be mad at money not coming. That's yeah. the part. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's so interesting about like all the verification, you know what I'm saying, talk that's going on. You know, everybody's talking about verification to protect against like AI images. I'm yeah. like, man, I'm, I'm, I don't know, man. The images for me or whatever, but that's the voice thing that's fucking me up. It's like, man, you know, like, nah, yeah. like that. They've been. I was. I was just showing Sean before this episode, like the uh, the progress of the AI. Right, like last year when they dropped the Juice World, Hey there, Delilah to the shit that's been coming out in the last like couple of days, bro. That's that progress over a year span is like crazy. You yeah, know what I'm saying, um, yeah, from like robotic sounding to like, oh damn moving on the fly hearing this really quickly i couldn't tell even if i sat with it for a while some of them i still can't tell so that's just what's interesting to me man it's like i feel like the conversation around what are we going to do for this really got started with the initial young guru uh, ig clip but it doesn't feel like it went far you know and i feel right. like we got at least another like four or five months of like jokes and games and haha this is pretty funny look at kanye saying ice spice and then yep. some some shit gonna go down and we all gonna be like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, oh this gonna, shit, this shit is serious. We're gonna see it now. And it's gonna be a fan, but I'm telling you, a fan gonna fuck the game up. Always. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna these, be a fan. These new age fans. <laughs> these new age fans. Let's read Young Guru's post real quick. He yeah. said, I've been trying to tell everyone that this is where we are now with AI. For some reason, this one got everyone's attention. And he, this post is not his original post that got taken down, but it's on a Jay-Z remix that sounds a lot like Jay-Z. Uh so what we so what do we do? On one hand, I'm well aware that you can't stop technology. Once the genie is out of the box, you can't put it back in. On the other hand, we have to protect the rights of artists, not only artists, but everyone in society. People should not be able to take your name, image and likeness without permission. You have to add the voice to this law. Again, that's not a thing right now. You cannot copyright your voice yet. We have to learn from past mistakes. You would be a fool to chase every person that is going to do this we learned that lesson with napster the only way i see to deal with it is to change the law there are so many different options we could change the united states law tomorrow but the internet is worldwide what a time to live in Ooh, i didn't think about that yeah because even changing it in the u.s doesn't mean you're changing it globally mm -hmm. so that's a whole nother thing and yes to this point you can't chase down all the individuals either but we know technology moves so fast, what's the damage that's gonna be done before the regulations of government catches up? That's yeah. always the game that's being played. It's gonna be years. Years. At least three. We'll see, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. And before we move on and get into the branding, branding talk, we gotta talk about likeness and even how all this AI puts you in a position where you really need to make sure your brand is intact and, and, and you build something meaningful. But likeness so him talking about likeness remember when we had our original conversation i was talking about likeness being so important and how michael jordan was the only person in the nba who owned his likeness yeah. like in the 90s he, yeah, did, he yeah. didn't do whatever the deal was obviously he's michael jordan he was on another level so he had that type of leverage yeah so that was why michael jordan wasn't in the other video games because nba sells it off so nba 2k NBA Jam, all these different games. Michael Jordan was like, eh, nah, I'm cool on this one. I'm cool on this one. And he had different reasons or nuances, apparently, on what he – maybe he liked that he was represented. Maybe he wasn't realistic enough. Or I don't know what all the different reasons when he approved the game or not. But like having that type of leverage puts you in a different um, position. And likeness, that's the power of likeness. So for people to be able to take that – away mm. by using this ai like we think it's all funny games but it's such a monetary opportunity to use likeness it's something that is about to be played with heavily and we, we have to watch because then that also alludes to uh snoop dog what did he just do with his likeness he just gave his likeness to uh, it was either nft related or he just gave his likeness to something big whatever or maybe Ah, I wish I could remember wrestling? what it was. No, it wasn't the wrestling. Let thing. me. We're just gonna have to bring up the Snoop Dogg thing later. But like, the point is, owning your likeness and how you monetize that likeness is extremely important. But without the laws in place, then you know how do you really take advantage of it? You're only gonna have the official corporations that always gotta pay because they're easy to sue, all right, and attack. 
but you'll have a lot of people on the underworld world, like just regular societal level, always flipping people's likeness. And you can't catch all of it, yeah. right? Shoot, because I might flip your likeness just enough for me to get to the next level. And then, all right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm legit now, yeah. right? It's the same yeah. thing as like dealing drugs until you get legit. It's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna flip these likenesses and do all these <laughs> other black hat things until I get to a certain level and now I'm in the game, right? So that's the world we're moving into. With that being said, quick second, have you ever seen an artist catch some traction and then they start to move? The numbers start to grow. They might even go viral. But then fast forward a year from now, somehow their numbers haven't really grown that much. They dropped back close to the same monthly listeners they had before the traction and viral moment. Well, that's because you have to know how to convert those moments into careers. And we've done this again and again with not only songs, but artists. And so has J.R. McKee, who's been a part of helping artists like Lil Durk, Rod Wave, Justine Scott, and Money Long. And we just did a collab where J.R. McKee does a step-by-step -step breakdown of how he took Money Long from zero to millions of monthly listeners and winning a Grammy over Beyonce, Mary J. Blige, and Jasmine Sullivan. Check out this breakdown while we still have it up. You can check it out at www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Don't forget the www or it won't work. Again, that's www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Back to the video. AI is something that's going to be really important in terms of the ability for other people to cap off of mm -hmm. an artist brand. But if your brand's not right in the first place, what they gonna AI? What they gonna AI? <laughs> what do people even care about? So to Russ's point, artists, y'all need to get your IG pages together. And what that looks like depends on who you are. I'm gonna let Russ speak on it. Something every independent artist should know and should be doing. Making sure that without trying too hard, that you are making the brand called you. I come across a lot of artists a lot of up and coming artists who they might have cool music or potential, but you go to their page and it just looks like there's no branding, meaning like, what are you about outside of the music? What are you about? Or how do you approach your your uh, your content? How do you approach your style of everything? Like, what's the brand that gets people to buy into you as a person? Like, I feel like for me, people have bought into the music, but people people are still around now. I'm going, I'm going on seven years in this shit now. You know, I blew up in 2016. It's about to be 2023. And I think people are still here because yeah, the music, but also because they've bought into me as a person and what I'm about and what I talk about. And I think that's really important. All right, cool. What do you talk about? Who are you as a person? And I think a lot of these People, when they hear branding, they always, always, always go to the aesthetic. And that was the thing that killed me when I first started working with artists. There's this thing in people's mind, maybe because it's more creative in this space, they always think aesthetic. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, man, what does my page look like? This is my brand. I'm using this color and this color. Brand is so much more than that. Mm -hmm. So if you look at Russ, his page isn't extremely like one vibe or another but what did he say people bought it to him as a person mm -hmm. and what he talks about all right so what does russ talk about what do, what do you think when you think russ uh business music industry advice sprinkle of drama here and there you know <laughs> you know he, he's almost like um i don't know i put him in this the the same bucket as like the little russell you know what i'm saying like the, yeah. the artist who found a way to stay music at industry adjacent when they're not making music yeah yeah it's like uh a rap gary v exactly it's exactly what it's like, yeah. it's like <laughs> it's a, it's a, actually a great description yeah so <laughs> when you think about that though again that's something that people can connect with people mm -hmm. know that he's about independence or business and doing things a certain way and you can watch him and, do it yeah watch me do it in mm -hmm. real time i'm gonna do the work you know what i mean i'm an entrepreneur that's his mentality and people buy into that mm -hmm. who don't necessarily like his music, right? And mm -hmm. then you have people who like his music who might not fully like connect with that message or care as much. But overall, people understand that that's who he is beyond the music. Yeah. So who are you beyond the music? And then 
who are you within the music? And I think both of those are brands that people need to think about um, where I know a lot of artists don't want to show who they are beyond the music period. All right. But what is your IG? What is your TikTok? What do they communicate? That's your food for thought. All right. It doesn't have to be these high res videos because usually that's not going to be your brand unless you're like the weekend and you're doing, you know, these movie style videos, you know, but like, what do you, what do you talk about? What do you look like? What do you sound like? What do you hang around or who do you hang around? Like what's the environment you work within? And what do you wear? What do you wear? Mm -hmm. All right. All those are different elements that create brand and brand impression. And you can lean into one heavier, right? Than others, because there's people who are, I'm heavy in the fashion space and people think that first, right? And oftentimes the superstars have like multiple of those, but mm -hmm. it's still done over time. You usually have to enter first with like one, maybe two real strong. Yeah, that you really lean into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I mean, because. I think the, the simplest way to explain, or I, I've kind of found to explain brand is, what do you want people to think about when they hear your name or see you, right? Like, what do you, what do you want people to think about? What do you want people to think about you? Like, whatever those things are, that is your brand. So when I see, when they see me, I want people to think about fun and family and finance. Yep. My, my, my brand is fun, family, finance, right? So, because I think, I don't know. I wish we could, as a collective, like come together and change like branding to like personality building because that's basically what it is. Like branding mm -hmm. is just building a personality, right? It's like yeah. you come in, the artist is kind of like a husk outside of whatever we're hearing in the music, and branding is over time like building the personality of this person to the audience, right? So that's what the, the, I don't know. I feel like it could be. I wish it could be changed to something like that. But that's what that's how I've kind of like just best explain to people like what do you want people to think about when they see you or hear your name or see your face? Like, what do you want people to think about you when they see your name, hear your face or anything like that? Right, right. Now with that same thing in mind, a rich music executive broke down why so many artists are having struggles when it comes to figuring out what their brand is today versus the old days. Check this out right here. It takes more to make it today but it's easier. It takes more thought, but it's easier. The old music business was like a supermarket. When you went to the supermarket, someone had to bring you in. That was a gatekeeper, a production company, a manager, someone who we trusted brought you in. And then when you came in, they said, this is the aisle you belong in. Oh, Tamira, you're a soulful R&B singer. You belong here. And then we will put you there. And then the other gatekeepers will shine a light on you. And, you know, people will discover you. That was the old way of the music business. The new music business is an open marketplace. So now everybody can walk in the supermarket, but now you got to decide where you, what aisle you belong on. I think a lot of the reason why people are frustrated because they on the wrong aisle or they're not packaging themselves correctly. If you are peanut butter, let's find the aisle where the jelly lives. It takes more to make it today, but it's easier. It takes more thought, but it's easier. The old music business was like a supermarket. We I see it right there. It's a bar. And this is why I always say people need to spend more time on the front end thinking. A lot of people hop straight into it and or they do stuff lazily. And I want to say lazily in terms of it didn't take you effort. I'm talking about lazily in terms of like the placement of where you belong, how you fit into things and how the overall creative is going to connect with people. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that becomes an X factor. You can figure it out along the way. That's also great if, to avoid paralysis and uh, analysis. But, but man, I think that is the struggle. Not just the saturation of the game, but now you have to be able to think about this. Where before someone was telling you where you go, mm -hmm. there were these boxes and we we're like, oh, no, I don't like the boxes. You can't put me in a box. But guess what? Boxes made it easy. The boxes made it easy. <laughs> boxes made it easy. And people are starting to see that. Artists are starting to see that because whether or not you you like the box or not, when it comes to generating a fan base and being able to monetize off of that, 
boxes still come into play. Yeah, bro. We we as consumers love boxes. You know what I'm we saying? Do. Like, I love a good. Yeah, oh, like we don't, but we do. Yeah, this is my all R and B crowd. This is my you know underground rap crowd or whatever. Yep. And I mean to like Red Red Daniel's point, um. The boxes also just help you figure out like how to tailor the messaging, right? Like so everything everything you said earlier, your brand is how you speak, but what you talk about, who you hang around, what you wear, what you do, things like this. The boxes help you figure it out. Hey, I speak to the emo rap crowd. I know they like Doc Martens and they eat at Chipotle and they wear <laughs> these obscure ass underground brands. You have a clear image of yeah. who you're talking to. Right. And then sometimes what gets me about artists in, in the boxes when, you know, when they disagree with being in the box, it's like, hey, even the issues and things that you talk about, that you represent, are the people more than likely in this box or they're in some box. You just haven't found the box yet. Right. So mm-hmm. like the box isn't meant. I think artists see the boxes is as almost being um, like disrespectful to the art. You're saying I sound like someone or move like someone artistically. Yeah. And when someone puts you in the box, it's not necessarily what we're saying. We're just saying like, hey, you are talking to the same group of people that this person is talking to, right? You are trying to convert the same group of people that this person is. And these are all the things that he or she has done before you that has worked to attract this group of people. This group mm-hmm. of people that, for the most part, all like some very similar things that we can tell you, hey, you want to relate to the people in this crowd, go get you some Doc Martens. Next time you do an interview, wear, wear a Doc Martens, you know what I'm saying? And then if you let them catch you in the at your next show with a t-shirt from this obscure underground brand that only people in that community know about, right? So it, the box like helps point you in the right direction. Bruh, and love it or <laughs> hate it, that's how people think. Yeah. Like, it sounds so trivial. Everybody loves this idea of not being superficial, bro. All y'all all superficial. Us, Everybody. All of us. You see, like you said, you see somebody wearing something that you recognize, and now you feel like they know something that you know, mm-hmm. right? And whatever made you be able to connect with that thing, you feel like they have similar values, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. now you like them. You feel close to them. Or it could be the opposite. Oh, snap. This person's wearing that. And I hate that, yep. right? It's like hey, everybody that wear that. The perfect symbol <laughs> of that over the last what four years was the MAGA hat, right? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. There was a very <laughs> strong idea of what that stood for, and people really loved yeah. it. People really hated it, but it meant something. Yeah. And we're doing that with everything. It's just not as strong, so we not we might not communicate it outwardly, but down to how you wear your hair. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Down to, you know, whether your clothes are tighter or baggier or do you switch it up and all these different things, patterns. and People pay attention to those. It, and even if you don't think you notice, there's like something in you, in you yeah. right? There's an instinct, that that animal idea, uh, <laughs> like that just judges, bro. We, ha- bro. we have to judge. People always try to get rid of this idea of judgment. Judgment is what allowed us to, to survive in a wild. Yeah. Judgment is what's going to allow us to survive and navigate <laughs> the wild of social media in today's society. It's just a different type of judgment. Some of it might be unfounded. We know. Yes. <laughs> but nobody's going to stop doing it. Yeah. Because nobody has time to truly understand and figure shit out. Right. Yeah. Like er- yeah. for every single person, I can't get to know everybody to know them truly. Therefore, I'm going to have to have this shorthand way of saying, oh man, he he wear, wears that shirt. Okay, bet. Yeah. You know, he likes that artist. Okay, bet. You know, that's my type of guy. Might be wrong, you know. Been wrong before, right? You know, oh, <laughs> dang, man. He just threw out that word. I, ain't, I, I thought we were cool, buddy. But like, that's kind of the way to understand how much you need to do it as an artist. Like when you just extrapolate it into regular society and it's so obvious that way, mm-hmm. it's like, it's no way I could be an artist and expect to like go around this system. Yeah, that's right. What, that's right. <laughs> like you expect people to just become morally pure when it comes to music? No, of course not. You know doesn't make sense. <laughs> it, doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't make sense, man. Because nowhere else in my life should I have to do this, right? Or I, I do I have to do it? So... Going back to the less, you know, philosophical aspect of it, but also just the idea of regular organization in general, right? My genres and vibes that I'm going for. Mm -hmm. So less about me judging who you are and whether for whether I like you or not, 
but also when do I want to experience you? Yeah, you know right. what I mean? When, when, where do you fit in my life? Where do you fit in my life? Yeah. Is this for turn up time? All right, are you turn up Tommy? Or are we like on the romance vibes when we play your music, all right? Or are we in the family cookout when we play your music? Mm -hmm. All of those are different things, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And people have people in their lives that they can take to these certain events and might not fit <laughs> in another event, right? <laughs> It's all the same. We're doing it all the time, man. Yeah, and yeah. you as an artist representing yet just another human to him at the end of the day. Yeah. Still fall under these same type of restrictions. Yeah, that's true. Use them to your advantage, though. Use them to your advantage. And that's part of what branding is. Manipulating those same foundations. Now, you got something else you want to add on that one? Nah, man, that was, that was, that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, look, we're going to continue this branding conversation by skipping to the Beyonce side of things. Oh, uh, okay. Should we play a clip or let you talk about it? I feel like you it's better that you just talk about it. Better if I talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I th better you describe what happened versus just No, oh, it. wait, because I was like the Beyonce thing. It's about the Sierra thing. It's Beyonce and Sierra. Uh -huh. And... All right, <laughs> I see what you're doing, man. You can play dumb. Well, he want me to talk about it. <laughs> no, nah, man, because I know I, like, I'm. I'm I, right. I feel like I missed the the Beyonce one. <laughs> the other the other ones I know, but all right. So let's do this. Oh, yeah, never mind. Yeah, it just came back to me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's start. <laughs> let's start with Sierra and then flip it into Beyonce and Chloe Bailey. There's a very very strong movement that's been happening where people have been noticing some things all right and we're gonna start with sierra because there's an article i could just read it straight up <laughs> <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be easier to describe and it's not my own word uh listen social media reacts to sierra previewing girl power song for the girls that don't need no man that's the quote right so before we get into fan reactions let me just actually read these words this is for the girls that get money. This is for the girls that don't need no man. This is for the girls in love with their self. This is for all the girls that done did it by themselves. This is for all the girls that are I N D E. <laughs> I cannot do the song. Fuck. I hate that. <laughs> Man, this is for all the girls that are independent. I'm not about to say that because I'm fucking around singing the, the Webby song. All right. So people are basically saying, yo, Sierra, you got. Russell Wilson. Yeah. Like, this doesn't make any sense. What are you talking about this independence? She's preaching independence and stay, wait, no, not stay single. You can be independently married or independently single too. What? Mm. See, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> we're going to, it's going to be a lot of editing around this because this is confusing. <laughs> we didn't get to do enough pre production on this article. I didn't know it was going to be this bad. Okay. This is embarrassing to watch a married woman sing a song like this. You do not care about black. You do not care about the black woman in your, your community. You can easily make love songs since you are in love with your husband, but you are purposely choosing to make a living that will encourage the women in our community to stay single because you know that's what sells and makes money. Please make it make sense. Bring back love. Bring back love songs and stop trying to rob your community. Another fan said, okay, I love you, CC, but you're married now. Let's change the narrative. We do need men, and it's not always about money. You are a family woman. Sing about that. Encourage a generation of wives and mothers, but I guess I'll wait to hear the rest of the song. And then another fan said, we need more songs promoting togetherness. Now, why is this so important? Why are we talking about this on the branding episode? Well, to touch on Beyonce's lightly, and it went viral on a fresh and fit podcast clip that was like on Twitter, no TikTok, I think it was. But apparently they were saying basically the same thing. They were saying what Beyonce makes all these independent women songs that she's telling you all these types of things. Yeah, if you look at her life, she was with this uh with Jay-Z, mm -hmm. Jay-Z cheated, and she's still with Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I think actual relationships are more complicated than that. But the general idea that we want to touch on is more so the the messaging that sells and how people try to lean their brands into that. 
But when you start to get to a certain level and people really know your life, mm-hmm. how hard that can be to just cut ca- to just capitalize on the messaging that works. Mm-hmm. So it's like is your brand congruent with who you really are? Because these people, they know, they do know it sells. Yeah. Yeah. They see the numbers, they're talking to the the, the the marketing managers and all that, you know. We we all know. So how do you how do you move in a environment when you know your brand isn't the sexiest brand anymore, even though you're on that level? Man, that's a that's a that's a great question, uh, Sean. I think it's only really one or two things you can do. You either lean into it, and your new brand becomes, you know, you know, like I love the phase when older artists start going through the watch me go through the, this new chapter in my life. You can mm-hmm. always pull the new chapter in my life. Trick, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you've been around like long enough. So either you you ride the, the changes and you stand on that, or, or you go into something else and you let it knock you out. That's what most. That's what happened to most artists. You know what, what you saying? mean? Like, like let's say for example, like think of all of the 2016 to 2018, like kind of like bubblegum trap artists that were really popular, mm-hmm. right? And then what was it probably like 2020 ish is kind of like when the sound changed towards more like the rapidy stuff right you start getting like you know meg and like the baby and all them start popping more so all the artists that were in that lane talking about things that appeal to that group of artists they either switched up right started talking about new things about where they were currently in life or they fell off with the musical trend, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And now they either do other things that make different music genres or their their fan bases aren't as lively as it once was. But that to me is really all it is. Like you either evolve and you take this new group of people with you or you go do something else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because very rarely does trying to go against that work out well. Like just we just see with the Sierra clip. Like I said, the, the audience, like they're, they're too quick to, to call you out on it, you right. know? And it's like, these it go, days especially. yeah, these are especially, right? It's like, yo, we see all this stuff about you. This doesn't make sense for you to be at this point in your life. Unless you, as an artist, are willing to give us, the consumer, more information, more context on why we should believe and support this and go along mm-hmm. with this. But what you have presented to me is not clicking. And so I'm just going to go find something that does represent this thing better, right? Because I think that's where sometimes artists get it confused. They think that, we as consumers just want to see who can who can portray the lifestyle the best, right? Whatever that lifestyle is, whatever genre you in, lifestyle that sells in your genre, just that, right? Yeah. When really it's about who makes us believe the lifestyle the most. Yeah. That's typically, what it is, right? It's not about who portrays it the best. Who makes me believe it the most? <laughs> in today's era, one hundred percent. Yeah. People want to believe everything. Everything is more of a reality TV show. Mm-hmm. Are right, they're opting in and they want to feel that it's real where before you just want to hear a great voice sing a great song, mm-hmm. right? That was what it was back in the day. You didn't necessarily have to believe that I don't know whoever it was whatever they were singing. Yeah. But in that same vein, there was some level of understanding. Well, I no, they understood it back then, but there was some level of still navigating the brand in that way too where you would still try to appear to be single mm-hmm. right or you would appear to be a ladies man and be with somebody for periods of time like all those pr moves and tricks basically play to this same thing right well i need to stay single that people don't need to see me with my girl all the time or see or people don't need to see me with my man all the time because my fans might not be able to believe me the fantasy of me that i'm selling and there's a difference between the brand that i'm selling and who i am as an individual so when we switch from the rest clip mm-hmm. of being able to get people to understand who you are as an artist and who you are as a person so they can love you more than their the music itself well you then have to be able to reconcile that with the other side well what if who you are as a person fucks up people's perception of you as an artist yeah that happens a lot it happens a lot like sometimes you just you just, I mean, I keep bringing the, the story up, but like I said, like the example when I saw the rapper I was hanging out with, check his bank account, bro. That, that, I'll <laughs> never let that go, bro. That's just burned me to this day because it, 
it was my first time ever seeing that. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man. Fiscally responsible? Yeah. I, actually, I didn't think about that, maybe. He probably was being fiscally responsible. But <laughs> me back then, in terms oh, you just thought he didn't have enough money. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's how I took it. I was like, oh, shit, man. Like, he's unsure if he has enough money for this purchase he's about to make. And I just had never seen that at that point in my life. I'd never seen, like, a rapper look concerned about the things in the checkout line. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it funny. threw me. That shit's so ignorant, bro. <laughs> it, it is, bro. Like, looking I back know. on it, saying it out loud, it, it is stupid as fuck. But back then, bro, I just remember being just, like, shook. Like, damn, bro, he checking his Bank of America out, bro. Like, what you, you know? I love it. I love it. But I will also give artists like Sierra and, and Beyonce the benefit of the doubt because they are artists that grew up in the era that was perfectly fine with selling characters, now transitioning into a generation that values authenticity, mm -hmm. right? And so, like you said, to her point, it's like, hey, we Do know they that- they value authenticity or they just wanna be able to believe? I That's we, the thing. We, we value, exactly, we value the perception of authenticity. Okay. I think you are as real as you are letting me right. believe you are. You know exactly. what I'm saying? And with what you've given me, that's all I can see. So I'm cool with that. That's literally how we think. Like, you know, as consumers, we know that like, I only get so much information on the other side of the screen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We know that every influencer, artist, personality is basically their own media brand. And media brands are only going to let out the information they want you to know. Now, what sucks for artists and things is that as you get bigger, you start to lose less control of your narrative because there are more people documenting you and, and paying attention to what you do, right? In the beginning, you could just right. lie. You can just lie. You can lie on every video that you put out, and nobody would know the wiser. Once you get the audience, there's people picking things out. Man, you said in this one video that you grew up in Southside Chicago, but then this other video you were talking about visiting your uncle in Atlanta. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's Atlanta and Chicago a long way away from each other? Like, what you talking about, right? People start paying attention to your story and the way you present it in these different spaces and things and piecing shit together. And then, like you said, if it doesn't line up then now we're turned off from you, right? If it's not lining up with what we think you're trying to sell to us, whatever that underlying messaging or or, or, or perception or whatever it's meant to be, then it, it turns us off from the music, unless it's like funny or something, you know what I'm saying? It's like, or it's like, that's the joke, is that right. you're meant to be a juxtaposition, you know, of, of kind of what's going on. So it's wild, man, it's wild. I, a, a really interesting example I kind of saw that recently is the, um, what's the dude's name, man? Like the, the white kid, that everybody kind of hates right now. Uh, Mabu, you heard this rapper named Mabu? Oh yeah. Did you see that video that he was going viral for like a, like a month and a half ago? Yeah, I knew of him before that, <laughs> and and then I saw that, and uh, yeah, you want to explain what that video was? Yeah, man. So essentially, like Mabu was like this sixteen year old rapper that like popped on TikTok maybe a year or two years ago at this point, um, and he's in the trap rap world, right? So. Going back, that's the the, the new trap, right? The new trap, right, right, right. That's the juxtaposition of this skinny, rich, white kid hanging out with these hood niggas from wherever, whatever. And he dropped this video. Uh, I don't think I can't think of the name of the songs like "Go Go to the Hood." Or, I'm, I, I want to go to the hood or something like that, where he's playing the character of a suburban kid who wants to go visit the hood. You know what I'm saying? And then it plays along with the lines of the song. He's saying, "I took a trip to the hood just so I can make it out." And I was like, "Man, this is like." This is extreme character selling. You know what I'm saying? This it makes me think six nine and those artists who sometimes are willing to like go to that extreme to like sell the character, because if nothing about him makes me believe it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Other than the fact that he has money, I personally believe that is believable. No, I mean the the, well, the wanting to go the the the, the, the I, that concept go to the hood so I can make it out a suburban kid and I'm just playing around. No one's believing that he's actually hood, yeah. right or you know, came up about that environment. It's, yeah, it, to me, it's not the character. To, if anything, if he's selling a character, the problem is it is believable that yeah. he's this person that, look, bro, like, let's, let's just get to it. We know how people, <laughs> we know how people are mad at this, yeah. right? Like, yeah. is, you know, we whether we want to say appropriation, whether we want to mm -hmm. say just, not having an understanding of what you're dealing with and how like real what yeah. you're talking about is. Yeah. All of it's trash. Yeah, he's 16, but there's enough people around him. And there was enough black people in that video where I wouldn't look. I don't know how much money he paid them black dudes to be in that video. But again, if they if they are taking money from him, 
they're in the same position as six nine. Sometimes, right? Yeah. The gang that was around six nine, because six yeah. nine was obviously violating like real gang behavior. He was not. He didn't go by the code. He wasn't uh, like officially one of them, right? Any of those things. So then, when shit went left. Then wait, what's going on? Like, mm. how could he be do this? Well, you let him in. You already knew he really wasn't mm-hmm. cut from the same cloth. It's the same thing. Yeah, y'all taking this money or y'all like trying to use this kid for some clout or whatever. But the reality is, like, it is what it is. Yeah. Like, this is not y'all aren't cut from that that same cloth. And if he go left and decide to do like an Adam twenty two. Then y'all gonna feel crazy. Yeah. Right? Which he probably will at some point, man. They all do. But and I was thinking about it because I, I was thinking, like, man, who was the last, like, artist like this that really took off? And at first I was like, oh, it was the Kid Leroy. When the Kid Leroy first came out, I remember he was hanging out. You remember, you remember Kid Leroy coming up, bro? He was hanging out with Dirk. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And all the interviews. You know what I'm saying? But, like, yeah, yeah. but he... I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It was, like, different. Like he No, it's different because he didn't... He didn't try to make himself seem someone he wasn't. Yeah. Well. No, nah, yeah, I, I can't say that. Yeah, I'm about to say. <laughs> but it wasn't he, as extreme. He yeah. wasn't trying to make us believe that he lived the same lifestyle. Right, he didn't try to make himself a, believe he yeah. be, he lived a certain lifestyle. Yeah. He might have changed his outward look to maybe identify a little bit more with a certain audience. Mm-hmm. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's also just tattoos, right? Like, so mm-hmm. who to say, right? But, like, like so tattoos don't necessarily make you hood or anything. But he hung around a certain type of people. But those were, didn't they find him? Yeah, they did. Yeah, so, right, like, yeah. that, these are the people who signed me. <laughs> like, so what can I do about that, right? <laughs> if anything, <laughs> and this is how they said they wanted to make me up as an artist. And I think that's a part of it, too, mm-hmm. right? So you have Dirk and someone who already has a name. And then, you know, they're kind of building the artist or introducing them to a world. And there's some decisions that get made that probably are decisions that are seen from the way they view the world. But... Yeah, Killer Roy didn't like ever hourly that I'm aware of. Like, yeah, so hey, keep that right there. He didn't ever <laughs> hourly that I'm aware of try to put himself out in a way um that made him seem like he's this guy. Which which man reminds me real quick. I gotta mention another example of the the Beyonce Sierra thing and selling something that you aren't necessarily as well. Is the Ja Rule situation. Oh, right? Yeah. OG one. OG. Oldest time is right? Well, <laughs> if it's as true as 50 Cent makes it seem. Yeah. Right? Ja Rule was this good good dude from a good background, but then he put on this hood persona because and, and hung more around that crowd because that was what he was attracted to. And, and then he made all these great songs for women, but then he also, and he could have just continued to be big there, but then he played himself by leaning so hard into the, the murder and getting the, and that whole vibe right but we know what was also selling heavily at hip-hop at the time because you got to throw in that i mean we are talking about little mabu and we mentioned six nine and all that as well but just want to make sure it's it's it's, it's, it's viewed as balance we're not just yeah. saying because it's, it's, it's women who are misrepresenting their yeah. brands it's across all sides and it's been happening for a long ass time but you yeah. think about like tupac tupac is a great example of it right beautiful example like, actually why one of the best historical examples yes of it, you know what i'm saying not Being, at all what he appeared to be so that's why you know I don't know, but I think that's an important thing for artists to think about when did it comes. Did you just call Tupac Six Nine, the OG Six Nine? I think I did. I ain't mean to, but I think <laughs> I, did. I think I, I, think I did. <laughs> it was true, but I remember watching this like old interview of somebody. I can't remember who it was, but talking about like how, like just loss he got in the character from Juice. You know what I'm saying? And how how much of an impact that had mm-hmm. on. Everything, bro, and it's like it's wild to think about, bro. And you, and you think of it, then fast forward like years later, and you think about the dude. Um, I can't think of his name, but the dude that played the Joker in the Dark Knight movie, Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger, bro, and you you start to think about what some of these actors be going through, mm-hmm. living a character, and then you pull yourself out of movies and think about music. It's not so hard to think about artists no. going through the same thing, right? I build this character. I start to. I have to be this character eighty five to ninety five percent of my time. And I started to believe I really am this character. You know, that shit happens a lot. Oh, that makes it harder. Yeah. Like, I think artists have it harder when they take it to that extent. Mm. I think it's more of a norm for actors to go really deep into a character. But if an if a musician ever goes 
as deep as an actor might, let's just say in real deal method acting, mm-hmm. the musician 100% has it worse. Yeah. Because there's a start and end date to that movie, right? And then there's an expectation on the consumer end that you are acting and playing a character. But as an artist, the consumers expect that to actually be who you are. Yeah. So now you have the world around you validating because you're playing this out in the real world. You're bringing this persona into the real world. So if let's just pretend like I'm the Joker, right? It's one thing I do this in a movie, but if I do some Joker shit to you in real life, I'm going to get re- repercussions, yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so the musicians are doing it in the real world, not yeah. the simulation of a movie. So I think that leads to a, uh, a lot of the mental health things that we see, which we're going to get into um, when we talk to Sam next episode. Uh, I mean, it's it's a, I don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a weird space. I don't even want to go too deep there because I know we're going to talk about it and want to stay on the, on the branding aspect of things. And yeah, that little Mabu situation, I think I just put that in the back of my head. Too, <laughs> um, Bro, I, I, I was just thinking about it because the clip hit my time like this. And I was like, man. Like, I hate that stuff, bro. Yeah, yeah bro. I was like, man, it's, it's Interesting, I think, because like we're so used to seeing like people come up like that who try to get us to believe that they are a part of their lifestyle. But I, he's the first person I've seen that's building the character. Like, no, I don't live it. I'm just rich enough to be able to observe it. You know what I'm saying? And get access to observe it when I want to. I was just like, man. I think that's almost more violating, though. Yeah, it is. No, I agree. Right? I think so. Yeah, because it's like it's like I see you as a cage that yeah. I'm gonna come play in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think, of course, that's where the obvious offense is. But the the thing is, is it always going to work? Because the people who don't understand are going to only be more on his side. Like, the uproar, the polarization is just going to make people love him more. Like, oh, y'all don't get it. Y'all don't get him. This isn't even that serious. And he's not racist or that. Like that's just gonna make them love him more. Yeah, it's gonna be six right? nine all over again. It's gonna be six nine all yeah. over again, except yeah. with racial, uh, which six nine wasn't a racial thing. It was more gang and then just like other and, stupid. And stuff, he has right? the kid shield, hold right? right. right and now. got the kid got shield. The kid all shield, the yeah. game, the things yeah. that they, the, uh, <laughs> you know, the games that get played. You know, I, I I now know I was immature. Like all mm-hmm. all those type of things, but I, and I think that's where the calculated risk is. There's a lot of people who get credit for being like marketing geniuses who I'll call them hmm, maybe more courageous than genius because there are certain moves that just work and they're simple moves, but they're hard to do. Mm-hmm. If you if you aren't willing to take the brunt force that it comes with. Gotta be willing. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. It's, like, it's not a genius move. It's just a move that most people are scared to do. Yeah. Or you have to be ignorant enough to do it. Which is a lot of times why you see younger kids do it because yeah. <laughs> yeah. they don't quite, they truly don't quite understand, right? Um, everything that they're doing at the moment. But, but yeah, I think that his situation is going to be interesting to uh, see how that develops. But yeah, you, you, it's at this space where, again, you're only going to have people get deeper on his side. The more they see anything like that, it's always it's, it's going to create intention in general, just because of how it's done. And then on the other side. I don't think he'll ever have too much damage because it's not pop and it's and it's in a world today where everything is so segmented. You're not going to get enough of black people to even be aware for it to even matter. Yeah, you know what I mean. And you know you can insert any community, right? But like you're just not going to have enough people aware of some of these types of things or doing these type of moves. They the risk is pretty low unless you go. Again, to the pop level, you're trying to run from president or something one day. <laughs> or to your point, it somehow crosses over to the other side. It somehow crosses yeah, over. Yeah, and they learn like, oh, shit, this is what yeah. the fuck is going on? Right, right. Yeah, so, yeah. That is that. Now, last thing on branding that we got to talk about, and that is, I don't know, artists, you can play yourself with your brand. You can lean into some of these things, just like what we just talked about, right? But characters is there a moment that you can lean into a character you can lean into an image and it bites you in the back as an artist a perfect example based on what your has told me <laughs> is <laughs> chloe bailey 
can you walk through? <laughs> bro, you are funny, bro. You are hilarious. Well, yeah, but um, what's the name of that movie she was just in? The one that, you know, everybody was walling out about the scene for. I can't think of the name of the movie, but she's in a new movie with, uh, what's his name, Damson Idris? Okay. And I'll look it up. They have a sex scene in the movie, and there's an interview clip of her talking about you know, how uncomfortable she was doing the sex scene and how he did a good job making her feel comfortable. Woo, woo, woo. The big point of that interview that I took away was there was a point when she says, like, yeah, they were like, you were uncomfortable, like, really? And she's like, yeah, you know, everybody assumes because, you know, I, I kind of make like sexual music and I do sexual things. They're like, I'm, I'm, I'm a super sexual person, but I'm not. You know, like I'm actually very conservative and, and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, huh, this is interesting. It's interesting. Like she is, if what she's saying is true, which I believe her, I believe Chloe, um, because I just kind of get that vibe from her based on other artists who do sexuality in a way where I believe them. You know what I'm saying? Um, It's probably the best way to look at it. But it's, I'm like, man, she is essentially created this character that she doesn't seem to mind. You know what I'm saying? But she is stuck in it. But she doesn't seem to mind it. You know, at least outwardly, she's not. She hasn't said anything. So speak more on the crit, the character that she created. The the like super hypersexual character. I mean, if you've been following like them, like I remember the day, I think I've told you so far, but I remember the day when she saw that that being a bad bitch was gonna open so many doors for her. I I saw it. I saw the Instagram post that popped it all off. And I saw the moves that her team made after the Instagram post where I could tell that they realized what was going on. And so they took her brand from being, you know, that was real like family friendly, super clean, straight out of Disney type shit before. Right. And then she just 180 ass everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Just just hard left run, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like I said, bro, I saw the social media post where I think the whole team realized this, this was the way to go. Or they were always like, had it. Oh, actually, this is conspiracy to me things that they were always ready for it. They were just waiting for her to do something that they could do to push it along. You know, there's a couple of things to that. So we know there's a move, right? When I talk about moves that aren't genius, this is just a playbook and you, you either do it or not. We know that the, hey, I have a squeaky clean image and then let me over sexualize yeah, myself. Bad bitch up. That's a move, yep. right? Miley Cyrus did it. Christina Aguilera did it. Rihanna did it in her own way. Like, you can go down the list. Yeah. Right. Now, the thing is with her is finding that transition. And like, based on what I'm hearing, like you are, right, you saw that this is working for you. Mm -hmm. All right. You see this is working. I'm leading in on social media. And then I was watching Grownish with my girl. And I saw her like changing on that show too. Mm -hmm. It was interesting mm -hmm. how this happened in real life and on the show. And they allowed that to reflect on both, mm -hmm. right? And played into it. But she was literally doing that on the show. So if you don't know what Grownish is, it's like a show where all these kids are in college, right? And so her character in college started to be more sexualized and started to like be more experimental. And you could literally see this entire evolution that you pretty much have seen if you've been to high school, to college, right? And as that happens over the years. Um, and the problem then becomes when you don't have that same way of moving in real life and people don't understand that it's an image, Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. But again, it's one thing to do it in Grownish, the TV show, it's another thing to do it on social media because people don't add it up the same. So it's like being that artist versus being the, well, no, being the musician artist versus being an actor artist, right? Yeah. So I'm yeah. doing it on social media. So people, oh, what, what you mean? What you mean that you were uncomfortable? Or are you now, so some people probably feel like offensive, like, all right, like, come on, Shawty, <laughs> like, you already know what it is. There's those people. Then you got some people who their fantasy will be broken because yeah. they thought you were this person, yeah. right? And now it's like, oh, so she's not really about that life. Then you got some people who think, oh, well, you're just trying to play, like, uh, what is it? Like, play innocent, the ones that attack you. Like, you're going to have all these basically bad <laughs> <laughs> interpretations. No matter what, it's like an L every single every single direction. Yeah. Um, Which is interesting, all right? And I think that's a especially unique space for women um when it comes to like that topic like the this the uh 
sexuality and where they well i don't even get, want to get in too deep into it but it's like i'm projecting this image but then i'm then i'm um i'm not like this in real life but then people question like well why are you questioning uh projecting that image right especially for people who think it's a negative image mm -hmm. and you have talent to do it without right that creates that catch 22. i don't know if there's a winning way out of that <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a winning, winning way out of that argument or whatever other than just saying this is what I want to do and I do what I want or something like that and I guess let the chips fall where they may because people are still going to feel however they feel yeah, man, it's just, every time I see it man like every time I see a new like woman artist start getting bad bitch I'm like oh man here, here it goes they've been doing the uh What's her name, bro? BK the Ruler, bro? They've been doing the BK the Ruler recently. It's been it's interesting watching I don't that. even know BK the Ruler. Yeah, man. Looking at her pre, like, a year ago and then as of, like, <laughs> the, the last year. Huge difference, bro. Huge difference in how they're branding her and putting her out. And, like, I saw it when they did it with, like, Tierra Whack. Like, so I, I, seen, I seen the Chloe one live. I seen a couple artists, like, go through the, the bad bitchification. You know what I'm saying? Um, do, you, do you think that women have to do that i don't think they have to do it i I, so I look at it like this with women artists is like i think talent can get you very far the talent plus ass is gonna take you take you to the moon you know what i'm saying like just if we've been honest you know what i'm saying like there's always been a degree of sexualization in the top 10 you know what i'm saying women artists but i would argue at least last like 20 30 years you know what i'm saying um, so I think it's one of those things. Does Taylor Swift have some sexualization going on? She did like a little bit, especially in this new yeah. like project. You know, she's trying to be like the whole bad girl thing. She got like a little like you know, okay. She wearing some red lipstick, might be a little top. You know, I guess that's just so far from my type. I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you were doing, but uh... <laughs> that's what she was going for. You was flirting. <laughs> <laughs> But even in general, man, like, I think just like sexual, adding sex into a brand, men or women is, a, I think, a very slippery slope. There's an actor, I can't think of his name, but this old, old dude actor that's, uh, was going viral over the last couple of days because he was saying that he's tired of like, his fans like sexualizing him. And I've heard that from like different acts before. Like I've heard that from music artists, I've heard that from actors. I've seen it in person, like I've seen an artist a male artist dealing with his female fans and they they trying to hit and he's just over it. Like I seen it in his eyes, like he's just like. You know what, <laughs> that's fair. And I think because there's other, I mean the dynamics are different mm -hmm. and you don't see males lean into that as heavily because also, well no, as often because also there's like a, a downside from a male perspective, mm -hmm. right? Like, I don't typically see women talk down on women for being not overly sexualized. Like overly sexualized is one thing, right? Where you like, I, of, course, of course, there'll be someone who have some kind of pushback, whether it's morally or just whatever. But like for being sexualized, mm -hmm. typically they like sec, uh, they promote it. They um maybe appreciate it maybe even admire it kind of give them some ideas of how they want to present themselves or whatever um or just respect it and then men obviously are like <laughs> mouth thought wide open like oh man i love it i love it i love yeah. it you know yeah. like being thirsty about it when a man does that though women will uphold that man and oh he's sexy da 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 but dudes there might be a pushback like I can't follow no dude like this. Like this dude posting these pictures. I can't follow no man who always got his shirt off, right? You know, it's so the, women get gains on both sides. Men could cut off their entire like half of their audience. Yeah, yeah, I see. yeah. I didn't even think about that in that same yeah. way. So I think that's probably part of why they don't <laughs> lead into it as as heavily or as often. But then a case like D'Angelo, he was a perfect case. Mm, All right, yeah. he had the untitled track classic amazing black excellence <laughs> yet at the same time when he did that women like groveled over him ridiculously and he literally couldn't take it and left 
the industry. Because if you pay attention to D'Angelo, he's an artist, artist, mm -hmm. like an artist, 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 artist. Like when it comes to the interpretation, um, the care for the music, how he handles himself. And I don't know if you ever like, heard this, but like he wasn't that dude growing up. Like apparently he was like overweight. Um, he wasn't Mr. Bitch. Like a nah, yeah. not even close to it's it. Crazy. Like a like maybe like a gamer. Like that was yeah. man, before gamers were the coolest gamers are today. You know what I mean? Like see, that's a whole side argument. But like a <laughs> lot of this stuff that people like to lean in today, it don't even count no more because it's cool. Like all this alt stuff is like, but the alt is cool, so it's not really alt. Yeah, it's cool to be different. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it ain't different to be different. Cool exactly. Be different. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even want to be different for real <laughs> when I don't get social game from it. But but yeah, like he would really wasn't that. Yeah. So he was like taken aback. It was just too much at once. And then like women wouldn't respect the music. Like it was like so like take your shirt off, take your shirt off at a concert. And he up here trying to like, you know what I mean, play <laughs> these riffs and get one off. And it really did like get to him. Yeah. It was a big thing because now he had this entire image that overtook who he wanted to present himself as yeah. and who he really identified himself as. So, you know, it, it can go both ways for sure. Yeah, I've, I mean, we've seen it with like the Kevin Gates getting assaulted at his show, right? Yeah. Uh, like I have an artist homie who at one of his festival performances, one of the fans was like reached over the fence and like kissed him and he was like, he was Whoa. mad about it, exactly, but he was Whoa. kissing a random festival stranger, bro? No, different. Shawty. But he was mad, about, he was he was salty about that shit, bro. Like he was, bro, he was mad about shit the whole day. Man, yeah. like my face will feel <laughs> burning, man. I would not, hell no. Yeah, so it's like, you see the negatives of both sides, which, you know, to take it back to the, the branding point, it's something that, artists have to kind of think about right because i would tell art i've had artists ask me before yo should i make my brand be built around who i am as a person a real person or do i build my brand around the character and what i want people to think of me and the answer to that question is neither are really right or wrong but you have to be aware of the possible consequences that come with whatever direction you choose to go so if there are real elements about your life that could bring a particular result to you if you were to publicize it or go that way, yeah. are you cool with the consequences? And then same with the character. If I make this character and this character is this type of person and does these types of things, am I cool with what the possible end result might be and what I might have to uphold to my audience for the rest of my career? You know, those are those are things that you have to think about yep. when you're thinking about what direction do you want to build your brand in. And some of it is hard, right? It's hard to know that if I follow the brand path of being the cool vegan guy for the next four years, I don't know where that's going to you know, end up or what my audience is going to think of me and what I can't change about myself five, six, seven years from now because that shit is so deep in their psyche. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, the hard questions you got to think about, you know what I'm saying? Hard questions. Like, no, like, like I said, like, what, what do you want people to think about when they see you, hear your name, see your face? Like, that's essentially what you're building. Real or fake? <laughs> Real or fake? <laughs> right? That's up to you. That's up to you. Now, with that being said, this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. We out. Peace.